bow. Such a funny little hero, but until you came along, we counted on our fingers and toes. Now you're here to stay, and nobody really knows. I wonder who you are, why we could never reach a star without you, zero, my hero. How wonderful you are. Zero has been created independently by several different cultures, hundreds and some of them thousands of years ago. How did these people independently and separately think up this brilliant concept? Let's look into it a little more. The Babylonians were probably the first people to come up with the idea of using zero, around the year 400 BC. They didn't actually think of it as an independent number, but as a placeholder. For instance, they would use it to distinguish between the number 2106 and 216, which they hadn't been able to do before the invention of zero. The Babylonians didn't use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like we do today, though. They used a system of writing called cuneiform. This was a form of writing that used wedge symbols to indicate numbers. Writing in damp clay tablets, they counted in 60s and used two symbols to represent all their numbers. They did this by using a wedge shape for a 1 and a crescent shape for a 10 grouping them together to create symbols. The Babylonians had inherited the Sumerian counting system in 2000 BC. This system was positional, meaning that the placement of the symbol relative to the others indicated the value of the number. So how would they write the number 3604? It's 160 squared and four ones. Like that. But the blank space for the 60s column was not very practical. So, one scribe solved this problem by using the literature separator, a sideways superscript double wedge, like this. To indicate that this space had a zero. In this method of writing, this would be 64, and this would be 604. You're likely sitting there thinking that that idea is ridiculous. How are people supposed to know whether they were reading about two chickens or 20 chickens? However, we do the same contextual interpretations today. How often have you asked someone how much something costs? Say you're at a French club bake sale and want to know how much it would cost to buy a crepe. The salesperson replies that it costs 350. You know what that means. $3.50. But you could just as easily interpret $3.50 as meaning $350. You know by context, because it would be ridiculous if a crepe were to cost that much. And that's how the Babylonians saw their system. To them, it made perfect sense. Despite the advances the Babylonians made in understanding zero as a useful placeholder in the number system, they never really understood it as a number in its own right. They would say such things as, the grain is exhausted. When trying to subtract, one script wrote, 20 minus 20, you see. The idea of zero as a number by itself would begin to catch on many hundreds of years later. The Mayan civilization flourished in Central America from 2000 BC until the arrival of the Spanish in the early 1500s. Brilliant mathematicians, they came up with an astoundingly accurate calendar, which led to their being the first people anywhere to use the number zero as both a placeholder and an independent number, completely independent of the Babylonians' discoveries of zero across the Atlantic, 600 years before and 12,000 miles away. The first record of the Mayans using the number zero was around 8350, and later, around 665, they also began to use the symbol as a placeholder. The need for this important differentiation stemmed from the complex Mesoamerican long count calendar used by the Mayan and Incan empires. Scholars needed a placeholder to indicate dates. The complicated calendar measured dates through specific units of time. 
To say a date, each unit needed to be filled in. For example, a date with 8 bakhtans, 13 cottons, 3 tons, 0 unials, and 2 kins needed one figure for each place. To chart the complex calendar shown here, heads and people and other various forms were used to represent numbers. The long count calendar was based upon a recurring time period of 1,872,000 days, which is approximately 5,125 years. It measured time from the beginning of the Mayan civilization, which they dated as August 12, 3,113 BC until December 21, 2012, a day that superstitious people today believe that the Mayans meant to be the end of all time. In reality, the Mayans most likely believed this date to be the end of a certain larger unit of time. They recorded dates by writing their assigned periods, seen here, from left to right. Starting at year zero, 3113 BC, the calendar was set at all zeros. When each time slot reached its maximum, it would then reset to zero and the total would be carried forward into the next time cycle to its left. For example, 19 days from the beginning of a long count period would read 0, 0, 0, 0, 19. Upon day 20, the readout would be given as 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. After 13 bakhtans had been accomplished, the calendar would have to reset to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and start over, because there were no larger slots of time. This would happen after 1,872,000 days. This great length of time is called the Great Cycle of the Maya. They would have seen December 21st, 2012 as a day for a huge celebration of a new beginning of time. The final independent invention of zero was in India. There has been much debate over when exactly it was invented, because so many Indian writings are in fact copies of older original texts. Therefore, it's difficult for historians to determine when the zero first began to be used in India. The place notation of these ten, really nine, digits wasn't the same as the way we write them today. Mm -hmm. From left to right, they wrote with the ones place first. Therefore, if they wrote 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they really meant 6,543,210. Around 630 AD, Brahmagupta wrote a mathematics book in which he wrote down several rules for zero as a number in its own right. In his book, he talked about zero as more than just a placeholder for lack of quantity like the Romans thought of n, or to be used in representing part of another number, like in writing 60. Among the rules that Brahmagupta wrote are a number minus itself equals zero, and anything plus zero equals itself. Pretty simple, right? We may think so today, but this was revolutionary for a time when just the thought of zero was as abstract as us trying to fathom an infinitely expanding universe. Ramagupta also wrote that 0 plus 0 equals 0, 0 minus negative 1 equals 1, 0 minus 3 equals negative 3, anything multiplied by 0 equals 0, and 0 minus 0 equals 0. However much he tried, though, Ramagupta couldn't deal with fractions that have 0 as a denominator. He wrote down that 0 divided by anything equals 0, but also, wrongly, that a number remains unchanged when divided by 0. As we know today, this is not true. Division by zero was far beyond Brahmagupta's time, though, so he definitely deserves credit. It wasn't figured out until Newton and Leibniz invented calculus in the late 1600s. In the 8830s, about 200 years after Brahmagupta, a man called Mahavira tried to update Brahmagupta's book and made an important addition. Anything minus zero equals itself. By 879 AD, Zero was being written in the same oval shape recognizable today, only smaller than the other numbers, and in a sort of subscript. Around the same time, a Persian mathematician called Muhammad ibn Musay al Khwarizmi figured out what we know today as algebra, working on equations that equal zero. He also figured out how to multiply and divide numbers. The word algorithm came from a butchering of his name. Much later, in the 8011s, a man named Ibn Ezra wrote multiple treatises on numbers, which brought Indian symbols and ideas of decimal fractions to the attention of educated Europeans. Ibn Ezra, a learned Spanish man, wandered throughout the Middle East and Europe for years after having left Spain because of persecution of the Jews. He brought his acquired knowledge back to Europe, 
helping mathematical ideas to spread west to Islamic countries. At the same time, Bhaskara II, known as Bhaskara the Teacher, was making significant contributions to mathematical knowledge in India. While working on calculus and astronomical calculations, Bhaskara made various conclusions about properties of zero, including rules about division, which seemed to stump so many. He wrote that zero to any power is zero, and that the reverse is true, the nth root of zero is zero. Also, Bhaskara wrote that anything divided by zero equals a fraction with an infinite quantity, which is therefore equal to anything else divided by zero. Struggling to explain why this was so, Bhaskara wrote that this was a parallel concept to the idea that no change takes place in the infinite and immutable God when worlds are created or destroyed, though numerous orders of beings are absorbed or put forth. The reason this concept is wrote is that if n is divided by zero, and that's infinity, then it follows that n equals n, so any number is equal to any other number, which we all know isn't right. By the year AD 700, the number zero was spreading outwards from India, and was soon adopted by Chinese mathematicians. By 1303, the circular symbol for zero had been adopted, and was used in the manuscripts of the great mathematician Zhu Shijie. Before long, mathematicians throughout Europe and Asia were working to solve the complexities of this deceivingly simple number. The Arabs developed a number system based on the Indians, which is the same one that we use today. The Italian mathematician Fibonacci was enthusiastic about the Arab numerals around the turn of the 17th century, and he helped spread their popularity in Europe in place of Roman numerals. He said, with these nine figures and with the sign zero, any number may be written. The Europeans became familiar with the Arabs' number system, but they were not very bold in their treatment of zero, seeing it as a sign rather than its own number. The Italian Renaissance mathematician Girolamo Cardano solved cubic and quartic equations in the mid-1500s without using zero, because it wasn't a part of the mathematics that he knew. Zero didn't really catch on in Europe until the 1600s. Around the turn of the 17th century, René Descartes used zero, zero as the origin for his Cartesian coordinate system. Around the same time, Newton and Leibniz, the developers of calculus, made the final step in understanding zero after much analysis from having worked with numbers as they approached zero. Calculus was born, leading to the scientific fields of physics and engineering. Utterly perplexing questions began to be analyzed. Today, zero is such a familiar term that to discuss it to such an extent seems like much ado about nothing. But it is precisely this nothing that has allowed human civilization to advance so far, particularly in the fields of mathematics. Zero may be nothing, but it certainly has had a great impact on our world. Something which seems to confuse quite a few people is the fact that there is no year zero in our Gregorian calendar. The years go straight from 1 BC to 1 AD. Therefore, Jesus was not born in the year zero because there is no year zero. He was likely born around 6 to 4 BC anyway, but that's besides the point. In fact, a person born in 10 BC who died in 10 AD died at the age of 19, not 20. This is a common misconception and bewilders many when the turn of the century comes in the year 2001 instead of the year 2000. That's all, folks! Three zeros after any number, and you multiply that number by 1,000, etc., etc., at infinitum, at us, forever and ever, with zero, my hero, how one.